Hello friends, good morning. I am Sopnil Singh and today we will look upon various important concepts related to basic pharmacology which are the building blocks which help you a lot in various subjects, in various topics which you will prepare in future for various exams like GPET, NIPER or any other medical exam. So, of my presentation, the introduction of pharmacology then various aspects related to the pharmacokinetics that is the absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion. So very first is the what is a pharmacology. Pharmacology is the science of drugs. This is the branch in which we will read about various aspects of drug when it is administered into the body. Oswald Simedever regards as the father of pharmacology. Pharmacology is a branch which is divided into several sub branches like pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacotherapeutics, chemotherapy, and toxicology, etc. We will concentrate on mainly pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetic division for our study. Coming to the drug, when a drug is administered into the body, so there are two phenomena which are going to occur in the body the very first is the the drug will exert some effect on the body and what scientifically we call it as the pharmacodynamics on the other hand the body will exert some effect on the drug and this is called as the pharmacokinetics today in this lecture we will look upon the various aspects of pharmacokinetics before move, moving to that first have a look on various routes of administration of drug to so drug can be administered by various routes if we see the classification of the various routes of administration then we can classify them in a two group classes and they are local and systemic local administration means the drug is not going to be absorbed in the blood and it is going to act locally or the area where which we are going to apply the drug while the systemic drug delivery is going to absorb into the blood stream and then it is going to exert it, its effect into the body coming to the local route it may be topical intraarticular or intrathecal while systemic route may be enteral that is the drug administration through git or it may be parenteral which means direct blood direct drug administration into the blood stream so coming to the various important points of these various the very first is the local route where the drug has very low or no systemic absorption. This is the only point which you must have to remember. Then coming to the systemic route. The very first and the most famous route is the oral. Oral route is the safer and economical but it has several disadvantages like Various drugs are ineffective because of their high first pass metabolism. What is this? We will see in the coming few slides. So, very high first pass metabolism inhibits the administration of various drugs through oral route and the examples are nitrates, lignocaine and propranol. While some drugs like proteins or like insulin or some antibiotics like penicillin G have the problem of instability in the gastric region and they may suffer with the problem of degradation and they are also ineffective if they are delivered through the oral route. Coming to the sublingual route, this route is having a very good advantage over oral is that it avoids the first pass metabolism and this is the route which is mainly used in emergency conditions. The another point is that the only lipid soluble drug and non-irritating drugs 
can be used through sublingual roots. The examples are nitroglycerin, isosorbide dinitrate, which are used in the emergency conditions like cardiac ischemia. Transdermal root, it is only restricted for highly sol lipid soluble drug because the drug have to pass the various layers of skins which allows only the lipid soluble compounds to pass through. Coming to the nasal root, only you have to read the examples and they are nepharelin which is a gonadotropin release hormone agonist, calcitonin and desmopressin. Another route is the inhalational route. The most important point to note here is the rate of drug delivery can be controlled like IV infusion. The drugs which are administered by this route are anti-asthmatic and inhibitional anesthetic agents. Another route is the rectal route which avoids first pass metabolism up to 50% and generally digipam in febrile seizures in case of children is administered through this route. Then the intravenous route, the two types of administrations has been possible in case of IV that is a bolus in which a dose is injected at once or infusion in which there is a continuous delivery over a period of time. Then, then coming to the intradermal, most of the vaccines are administered to this route. Coming to the, we will, in today's lecture we will concentrate on the pharmacokinetics the various important aspects related to pharmacokinetics and pharmacokinetics is also known as ADME study in which ADME stands for absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. We will look upon all these things one by one. So very first aspect is the absorption, the very important thing for a drug to act that it must get absorbed. When a drug will get absorbed, what are the various factors which affects the absorption of a drug? Let's have a look. When a drug is administered into the body, it exists in two forms. That are the ionized form and unionized form. Ionized form is the form of a drug which is water soluble and because it is water soluble it is don't it will not cross the biological membrane because all of you know that biological membranes are lipidic in nature and they will not allow the water soluble molecule to pass through them while the unionized form of the drug is lipid soluble and because it is lipid soluble it can easily cross the biological membrane and this portion is going to be absorbed and going to exert its effect inside the body. So, for absorption of a drug from biological membrane, it should be present in unionized lipid soluble form. Now, what are the factors which affect the ionization of a drug? So, ionization of a drug depends upon the pH of the surrounding medium and the pK of drug. PK is the dissociation constant. Let's make it simple. You have to only memorize a concept and that is the absorption will occur when medium is same. What does this mean? It simply means that acidic drug is going to absorb from the region where the pH is acidic while basic drug is going to be absorbed from the reason from where the pH is basic because acidic drug will remain unionized in acidic environment and because they are unionized therefore they are lipid soluble and because they are lipid soluble they are going to absorb while in case of basic drugs they will remain unionized in basic environment and they will get absorbed from basic pH. So this is the very important concepts which you must uh, will be aware of and we will further more look upon the various important parameters. The one more con uh, con concept in this regard is that ionization of a drug is neither 100% nor 0% because 
all the drugs are weak bases and weak bases and you all know that weak acids and weak bases are those acid or base whose ionization is not 100% if they are 100% ionized they are strong acid or strong bases okay so what is the important point here to note is that because ionization is neither 100 nor 0% therefore a drug should never be 100% lipid or water soluble what does it mean it means that a drug is partly water soluble and partly lipid soluble to now in previous slide we have seen that the ionization of drug depends on two important concept and that is the pH and pK so there is a relationship which exists to determine the extent of drug ionization or unionization okay so very first thing you should know that what is pK pK is nothing but dissociation constant and pK is the pH at which drug is 50% ionized and 50% unionized okay let's take an example of acidic drug acidic drug will remain unionized in acidic media but if you keep this acidic drug in basic medium the drug will ionizes same case follows in basic drug they are remains unionized in basic media but if you will keep them in acidic environment they will ionize now coming to a very important concept we will discuss it with uh, with an help of example suppose i have an acidic drug whose pk is 4 and i have placed this drug in the ph of 4 now what will happen as i have already told you if you see here that pk a and ph are equal both are having the magnitude of 4 it means that drug will be 50% ionized and 50% unionized okay now suppose the same drug i will keep in a medium whose ph will having a value of 3 it means this is acidic and already we have seen that if acidic drug is kept in acidic environment it will remain in anionous form and therefore it remains lipid soluble now suppose the same drug i will keep in ph2 what will happen obviously it becomes more lipid soluble because more of the drug is unionized form but numerically we have to tell how much fraction of drug will remain in ionized and unionized form so here come the important points which are the very important concepts you must please pay attention in these concepts suppose if the ph of the medium is less than pk it means we are moving towards acidic side so for acidic drugs unionized form will increases because acidic drug remains unionized in acidic form acidic media and ionized form will decreases for basic drugs ionized form will increase and unionized form will decrease and if the ph of medium is more than pk it means medium is become basic the opposite phenomena will happen so the ionization or unionization of a drug depends upon difference between the ph and pk the important point here to note is that only we have to see the magnitude okay suppose when ph is equal to pk of drug then the difference between pH and pK is 0 it means that 50% of drug is ionized form and 50% is in unionized form when the difference between pH and pK becomes 1 that is the d value becomes 1 
वन फॉर्म इज नाइन्टी परसेंट एंड अदर इज टेन परसेंट एंड वी हैव टू सी द नेचर ऑफ ड्रग टू डिटरमाइन वेदर वॉट इज द नाइन्टी परसेंट फ्रैक्शन वॉट इज द टेन परसेंट फ्रैक्शन वी विल लुक अपॉन इन द कमिंग लाइफ वेन पी एच एंड पी के डिफरेंस बिकम टू वन फ्रैक्शन इज नाइन्टी नाइन परसेंट एंड अदर इज वन परसेंट when the difference between ph and pk becomes 3 then the one form of drug becomes 99.9% and other form is 0.1% so this is the concept which you must have a look upon and this is the concept which is going to come again and again during the whole pharmacology and various questions are asked on the basis of this concepts in nearly every year in gpet or niper or various phd exams which you should come across so i have given an example of an acidic drug whose pk is having a value of 3 now i have kept this drug in ph of medium 3 then you will know that the difference between ph and pk is zero it means 50% drug is in ionized form 50% in unionized form suppose now I, now i have increased the ph of the medium to 4 it means i am going to the basic condition and the difference between ph and pk becomes 1 it means that i am going to basic condition so acidic drug is going to ionize it means the ionized fraction will increase and what we have seen if difference is 1 then one form is 90% and other is 10% so 90% is ionized form and 10% is anionized form similarly in case of ph 5 and 6 as the difference will increase the ionized form will increase coming to the another important concept that is the bioavailability it is the fraction of administered drug that reaches into the systemic circulation in the unchanged form when we administer a dose through oral route it must have to get absorbed through the intestinal wall and the blood vessel and there are several enzymes which are present in the intestinal wall or what we call as gut wall which are responsible for the metabolism of drug or breakdown of drug the another thing is that there are several transporters which inhibits the absorption of the drug so there is a metabolism during the absorption of the drug through the gut wall after absorption it the drug is going to absorb through the portal vein to the liver and you all know that liver is the primary site for metabolism in the body so some fraction of drug get metabolized into the liver and the fraction of the drug which will remain after metabolism through gut wall and liver is going to absorb is going to absorb in the body in the unchanged form and that is the drug that is the fraction of the drug which is bioavailable to the body now here comes the first pass metabolic concept because drug is going to absorb and before absorption the metabolism is going to occur therefore this is called as pre systemic because systemic is nothing but the absorption of drug in blood so pre systemic means before reaching to the blood before reaching to the systemic circulation drug is metabolizing so it is called as pre systemic or first pass metabolism as we have seen in the oral route this is the major hurdle for various drugs because they are having a very high first pass metabolism and nearly 90 to 100 percent drug get metabolized in liver and there is no fraction which is available for the absorption in the unchanged form if we if we are going to administer the route uh, the drug by iv route then obviously bioavailability is 100 percent because all the fraction is you have directly injected into the blood stream so here comes the various important concepts of bioavailability how we can calculate the bioavailability of a drug for calculation of bioavailability we create we draw 
concentration versus a time graph we administer a drug through the route from which we want to calculate the bioavailability of a drug then we measure the concentration of the drug into the blood stream and we plot a curve we plot a graph between the concentration on the y axis and time on the x axis then we get a typical curve which is called as the bio concentration time graph and for calculating the bioavailability from this graph we have to calculate the area which is under the curve means we have to calculate this area which is called as area under curve and abbreviated by AUC okay so all the drugs have a certain concentration range the range in which they show the effect below that range they are ineffective and above that range they may show the toxic concentration and that range is called as the therapeutic range here you see the two terms MEC and MTC MEC is the minimum effective concentration which means that a drug should cross this minimum effective concentration line to show its effect on the body while MTC is nothing but maximum therapeutic concentration it means that this is the maximum concentration of the drug of a particular drug in the body up to which it will show its therapeutic effect if you will go above this region if you will go above this region means upside here somewhat here then the drug will show the toxic effect okay so this is the therapeutic range coming to the T max and C max. T max is the time required to reach the maximum plasma concentration. So C max is the maximum plasma concentration and T max is the time to achieve the maximum plasma concentration. Area under curves tell about the extent of absorption. T max reveals you the rate of absorption and C max is the concentration maximum concentration obtained in plasma bioequivalence is the important term when the difference in the two doses form when the difference in their bioavailability is plus minus 20 percent then we will call it as the bioequivalent coming to the formula how to calculate bioavailability is shown here you have to compare the area under curve of test drug and we have to divide it with area under curve of standard drug then we have to multiply the dose of a standard drug with the area under curve of test drug and similarly for the standard drug with the dose of test drug and the value which you will obtain is the bioavailability of that particular drug after absorption let's move to the distribution when a drug reaches to the blood after the absorption then it is distributed to the various tissues and the extent of distribution of this drug is determined by a hypothetical parameter that is the volume of distribution so volume of distribution is the volume that would be required to contain the administered dose if that dose was evenly distributed at the concentration measured in plasma. It means that it is the volume which contains the amount of drug at the concentration measured in the plasma. If a drug is having a higher volume of distribution, it is having, it means that the drug was entering into the tissues, more amount of drug was entering into the tissues. The 
factors which affect the volume of distribution of a drug is a lipid solubility and protein winding. As we all know that a lipid soluble drug processes blood vessel easily and they distribute into the body. So they distribute into the body thus they have the high volume of distribution. But if a drug is highly plasma protein bind then it will behave like a large molecule and large molecules are unable to cross the blood vessels thus it will remain inside the circulation and they have the low volume of distribution values. Another important concept related to the distribution is the when a drug binds to the plasma protein then it will also called as the bound fraction and the important point here to know th that is the only free form of the drug which is not bound to plasma protein is responsible for pharmacological action as well as metabolism of a drug which means that if a drug is going to bind to the plasma protein then it is going to longer acting because the drug which is bound to plasma protein is not going to metabolize so the drugs which are highly protein bound are also long acting so coming to the volume of distribution this is the formula to calculate volume of distribution it is the dose administered through IV route upon the plasma drug concentration which we obtain. It is the measure of the distribution of the drug. Volume of distribution is the main determinant of loading dose. Chloroquine is the drug with highest volume of distribution that is the 1300 liter per kg. Coming to the body water, how much water does a body, body contains so typically a body should contains a 42 liter of water and this water may be present in extracellular fluid or intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid is further divided into plasma or interstitial fluid when a drug reaches to the plasma there are four possibilities which may occur which depends on the ionization and molecular weight of a drug if suppose a drug is highly ionized and it is also having a high molecular weight so we know that highly ionized molecule are very poorly soluble and it is having also a high molecular weight so it will not able to cross the blood vessel and the volume of distribution is very low because it is going to remain only in plasma and therefore the volume of distribution is low and the value is 3 liter because this 3 liter is nothing but the volume of plasma so drug will only remain in the plasma therefore it is having a VD of 3 liter now suppose a second case when the drug is highly ionized but having a low molecular weight now in this case what will happen some of the drug will cross the blood vessels and it can reach to the interstitial fluid so we have to add the volume of plasma plus volume of interstitial fluid that is the 11 liter so 11 plus c is 14 liter so that drug is having the volume of distribution which is around 14 liter now third consideration is that the drug is unionized and having a low molecular weight so both the conditions are favoring the absorption of the drug so in this condition the drug will enter inside the cell also so now VD will become plasma plus interstitial fluid plus intracellular fluid which gives you a value of total body water that is the 42 so these type of drugs having a very high volume of distribution the fourth condition is that drug will be unionized and at the same time it is having low molecular weight but it is having a very high affinity for the tissues so VD can even make greater than total body water and it is greater than 42 liter as you have seen in the case of chloroquine which is having a value of volume distribution which is 3, uh, 1300 liter per kg. 
coming to the next section that is the metabolism which is more commonly known as bar transformation of the drug it is nothing but the chemical alteration of the drug in the body which render the non polar lipid soluble compounds into polar compounds so that they can excrete outside the body the primary site for metabolism in body is liver apart from that kidney intestine lungs and plasma also plays a important role in metabolism when a metabolism of drug can occur there are three possibilities which can occur the very first is the inactivation in which the drug after metabolism will be inactivated and this is the case which is followed in most of the drugs coming to the second possibility which will occur is the an active drug will give a rise to an active metabolite and then in this case as you see the both of the drug and metabolite are active therefore the pharmacological action which you will get is the sum total of both drug and their metabolite and this is the example this is the table which so use that the active drugs are giving rise to an active metabolite and this is a very important table which you must should go through and the important example is morphine whose active at metabolite is morphine 6 glucuronide diazepam oxazepam digitoxin gives rise to digoxin codeine gives rise to morphine codeine is also you know it is uh, antitussive and morphine is a very famous uh, analgesic type of drug okay so in this case active drugs are remaining active after their metabolism which will occur after metabolism of a drug is the activation of inactive drug and this is nothing but a pro drug concept in which a pro drug which is an inactive moiety is administered to the body and after metabolism it gets activated so various example of this concept is the these are the various pro drugs which after metabolism get into their subsequent active form now coming to the types of reactions which are involved in the metabolism there are generally two types of reactions which are involved in the metabolism or bio transformation of a drug the very first is the non synthetic or phase 1 or functionalization reaction in this case the functional group is generated or exposed the metabolite which will produced which will we get after this non synthetic reaction may be active or inactive the major reactions involved in the non synthetic or phase one reactions are oxidation reduction hydrolysis cyclization or decyclization of which the oxidation is the major pathway <coughs> for this type of reaction and this is the question which has been asked n number of times in gpad and niper second type of reaction which are involved in the biotype transformation of drug is the synthetic or phase 2 reaction why it is called as synthetic is because in this type of reaction there is going to be a conjugation of endogenous substrate to the previously formed metabolite to form a highly polar water soluble compound which will act easily excreted out of the body and the various reactions involved in synthetic or phase 2 reaction are the glucuronide conjugation acetylation methylation sulfate glycine or glutathione conjugation of which glucuronide conjugation is the major pathway metabolism can occur through various classes of enzymes various types of enzymes are involved in the metabolism of a drug and these enzymes which are involved in the metabolism of a drug are divided majorly into two or two categories that is a microsomal enzyme and non microsomal enzyme microsomal enzymes are the enzyme which are present in smooth endoplasmic reticulum the example includes monooxygenase cytochrome p450 and glucuronide transferase the very important point here to note is that 
these are the enzymes which are induced or inhibited by the other drugs therefore these are the enzymes which are prone to show the drug drug interaction while the second type that is the non microsomal enzyme are present in the cytoplasm and mitochondria the example includes flavor protein oxidase esterase amidase and conjugase these are the enzyme which are not inducible by other drugs therefore they will not show the drug drug interaction but these type of enzyme shows genetic polymorphism the very important phenomena so as we have seen that in previous slide that microsomal enzymes are induced or inhibited by other drugs and therefore they are prone for drug drug interaction and let's have a look how this phenomena occurs the drug which is metabolized by microsomal enzyme is called as substrate and a chemical which will increase or decrease that particular enzyme is called as inducer or inhibitor of that enzyme respectively suppose i have given a drug with a enzyme inducer what means it means that that enzyme inducer is going to increase the number of that enzyme and when the number of that enzyme will increase the metabolism of drug will also increase and the when the metabolism of drug will increase it means that the drug the concentration of drug which is active is going to decrease and when the concentration of and drug which is going to show you the pharmacological effect is decrease it means it has the decreased effect and when the decrease effect is obtained then we have to increase the dose of the drug because why we have to increase the dose of the drug because we have to achieve that particular therapeutic window which i have shown you earlier and when you have to increase the dose of a drug because the drug is not showing the effect this phenomena is called as tolerance okay guys i hope you will get this to the examples of drug which are enzyme inducers and this is the asked thousand of times in various exams and i have going to give you a trick which i have taken from isparz gupta book the enzyme inducer are the gprs cell phone you all knows you all all aware about this term gprs cell phone this is the code word for the drugs which are enzyme inducer now see g is grisufulvin p for phenytoin r for rifampicin s for smoking c for carbamazepine and fon for phenobarbital so these are the drugs which induces the enzymes and increases the metabolism of a drug of which it is a substrate now coming to the enzyme inhibitor what happen if you will give a drug with an enzyme inhibitor it will decrease the number of enzymes which is involved in the metabolism of a drug and when the metabolism of the drug will decrease the concentration of the drug will increase in the body the active form of the drug which is responsible for the pharmacological effect is will increase and this will lead to cross the maximum therapeutic range in the area under curve the plasma time curve and the drug will shows its toxicity the another trick the various drugs which are in enzyme inhibitors are you have to memorize this mnemonic and it is vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition vitamin v for valproate k for ketoconazole c for semetidine another c for ciprofloxacin e for erythromycin and i for isoniazid these are the drugs which are enzyme inhibitors and which will decrease the metabolism of an any drug and increases their toxicity the very important enzyme which is involved 
in various drug metabolism is the microsomal enzyme cytochrome 450 the 450 here denotes the lambda max of that enzyme and this is the super family of a microsome out of which cytochrome cytochrome p3a4 is involved in metabolism of 50 percent of drugs so this is the most important enzyme which is involved in the metabolism of drug coming to the nomenclature of this enzyme the first three words is the root word followed by family this is the subfamily and this is the gene number so this is the nomenclature of this particular enzyme. the very important concept which has been asked in gpat is the Hoffman elimination this is the nothing but a very simple concept it means that there is a metabolism of drug without any agency of enzyme it means that there is no enzyme which is required for the metabolism of drug and drug get metabolized metabolized by the spontaneous molecular rearrangement and the example is very important just uh, get uh, go through it it is the atracurium which has been already asked in G. the last concept of pharmacokinetics is the accretion it is the passage of systemically absorbed drug out of the body the major root which is involved in this process is the kidney and kidney involves three major mechanism for the excretion of drug first is glomerular filtration second is tubular reabsorption and third is tubular secretion coming to the glomerular, glomerular filtration the glomerular filtration depends on the plasma protein binding and renal blood flow but it does not depend upon the lipid solubility because all substance can cross the fenestrated glomerular, glomerular membrane because the pore size of this membrane is high enough that it will not pose any problem for any substance to cross okay the second is the tubular reabsorption depends on lipid solubility if a drug is more lipid soluble it will get more reabsorbed and it will less excreted from the body and as we all know that lipid solubility depends on ionization so ionized drug is going to excrete it out of the so this is an important concept which is used in the drug poisoning now suppose there is a poisoning of a drug which is acidic in nature now we want to excrete it out of the body so what we have to do we have to make the pH basic we have to alkalinize the urine and uh, compound used to alkalize the urine with sodium bicarbonate what happened the acidic drug when comes into contact with the alkaline urine they will get ionized and they will excrete it out of the body okay while in case of basic drug poisoning we have to acidify the urine through the ammonium chloride and when the basic drug come in the acidic environment they get ionized and water soluble and get out of the body so this is the concept used in the basic or acid drug poisoning the another trick the various drugs which are in enzyme inhibitors are you have to memorize this mnemonic and it is vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition vitamin v for well proid k for ketoconazole c for semetidine another c for ciprofloxacin e for erythromycin and i for isoniazid these are the drugs which are enzyme inhibitors now there is another term which is called as the elimination which is different from excretion so what is elimination is elimination is the sum total of excretion plus metabolism okay now there is a term which is written here is the kinetics it's, it means we are going to now play with time pharmacokinetics model are generally divided in two types that is the one compartment and two compartment one compartment model are the model in which drug is supposed to be distributed in a central compartment that is the blood or in other words drug is having less or no distribution into the tissue 
in this case elimination is continuous and the low plasma uh, concentration versus time curve is linear first order kinetics which will particular slide this is the <coughs> a typical graph for one compartment model in which there is a, a log plasma concentration x is on y axis and time which is present on x axis slope of this curve is minus k because the concentration of drug is going to decrease with the increasing time therefore this minus sign is there and uh, the case the rate constant of this particular order of the drug which is going to follow the very important term which is comes here is the clearance clearance is the product of rate constant and volume of distribution and if we will further elaborate the rate constant then the value which is depicting the rate constant is the 0.693 divided by half life of that drug if we will extrapolate this curve to the y axis then the point at which this curve touches the y axis is called as c not or the plasma concentration of that particular dose and the volume of distribution the formula is the dose administered divided by plasma concentration which we have seen earlier also and the concentration why i have written the formula again here is that this value you will get from this curve this is the curve from where you are going to get the plasma drug concentration okay so these are the some important formulas the renal clearance which is the uv by p uv divided by p u is the urine concentration v is the rate of urine flow and p is the plasma drug concentration in the same manner total body clearance rate of elimination divided by plasma drug concentration remember this formula they are generally asked at various exams and this will help you in further understanding the concepts of the drug form of drug may follow various order of kinetics which may be a zero or first order rate of elimination of a drug is directly proportional to the plasma concentration power to the order of an that reaction which our drug is going to follow for zero order kinetics if you will put zero here it is equal to 1 it means that rate of elimination is independent of plasma concentration or in other words we will say that rate of elimination is constant okay for first order kinetic rate of elimination if you pay, put a value 1 here it means rate of elimination is directly proportional to plasma concentration of the drug it means that first order kinetics follows the proportionality to the concentration of drug in plasma which will show you the various differences between first order kinetics and zero order kinetics with very important table recently there are various exams in which i have seen the question which have been asked from this particular table first order kinetics the most important thing which you must know is that constant fraction of drug is eliminated per unit time while in case of zero order kinetic constant amount of drug is going to eliminate it doesn't depend on the concentration of drug constant amount suppose 2 g per hour is the amount which is going to eliminate this will remain constant irrespective of the drug concentration into the plasma the rate of elimination is proportional to the plasma drug concentration already we have seen and here it is independent clearance and t half both will remain constant in case of first order kinetics while they will vary in case of zero order kinetics most drugs will follow first order kinetics and very few drugs follow the pure zero order kinetics and the example is alcohol now there is another term which is called as the elimination which is different from excretion so what is elimination is elimination is 
the sum total of excretion plus metabolism okay now there is a term which is written here is the kinetics so it means we are going to now play with time pharmacokinetics model are generally divided in two type that is the one compartment and two compartment one compartment the very important concept which has been asked in gpet is the hoffman elimination this is the nothing but a very simple concept it means that there is a metabolism of drug without any agency of enzyme it means that there is no enzyme which is required for the metabolism of drug and drug get metabolized metabolized by the spontaneous molecular rearrangement and the example is very important just uh, get uh, go through it it is the atracurium which has been already asked in gpet thank you very much thank you guys see you again all the best